Hi and welcome to Bitonto Pizza. It's Paul and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to make bread in our pizza oven. So not making pizza today, just bread. I've chosen a specific type of bread. Uh, it's called the Pane d'Altamura, which is from the southern region of Italy. There's a town named Altamura, which has a geographical designation for their bread. So obviously I can't make the official pane d'altamura, but we're gonna make a pane d'altamura style. It's known for its thick crust and the inside is gonna be airy and bubbly. The recipe is in the comments and it's really easy to make. All you need is 700 grams of flour, 500 grams of water, four grams of dry yeast or 12 grams of the uh, lievito di birra, the cake yeast. Uh, and about 12 grams to 15 grams of salt. But the first step is we're going to measure out our ingredients. The second step is we're gonna mix the yeast in with the water, with half of the water. So you're gonna take 250 milliliters of water and all of your yeast and mix it together so it's kind of nice and absorbed in the water, just like you would do if you're making pizza dough. We're gonna pour our flour into a KitchenAid mixer you can also do this by hand, but let me just say that it's a lot easier if you have a mixer with a dough hook. You pour the flour in and then you put it on speed one. You start making the, the mixer turn and just pour in the uh, half water with the yeast that you have. Make sure you keep the yeast kind of mixed in there so that it gets mixed well in with the rest of the ingredients, the flour essentially. Then once you've got that mixed in, you're gonna mix in the rest of the water. You let it spin on one for about 10 minutes. Then you're gonna put the salt in. Let that go for about five minutes is what I do. And then essentially it's mixed, it's ready to go. So you're not gonna need it at that point. You're gonna need it a little bit later. After two hours, you're gonna pull the dough out and just kind of gently fold it over on itself. Keep folding it over on itself and then basically at that point it's ready to go in the oven once you make the the dough you're just going to put it straight in the oven if you have a pizza oven right on the stone you're going to follow the rules you would follow for making regular pizza which is i'm going to heat up the oven for about three hours i'm going to build a smaller fire for this one so you'll see i'm not going to get the flames up i'm not trying to get the oven up to full heat. What I really want the oven to get to is about 250, 300 degrees Celsius, you know, around 500, 550 degrees Fahrenheit is kind of my goal there. Uh, but I'm gonna do it slowly. So I'm gonna take the same amount of time. I'm just gonna do it with less fire. That way the thermal mass absorbs the heat. I'm gonna vary from the initial recipe. Mrs. Bitonto Pizza insisted on this. So we're gonna make one big bread, big pane pugliese. Uh, the other we're going to do in small, like uh, small little loaves of bread. So we'll see how that goes. You can really do this with any bread. In fact, you can make regular pizza dough and just see one of my videos for making the Neapolitan pizza dough and do the exact same thing. So I would encourage you to bring your own bread recipe or follow the one in the links below. As you can see, I'm building a smaller fire here. The base is gonna be quite small, uh, only uh, a few layers. And then once I get that rolling, I'm gonna add another log on top of that, but I'm gonna keep the fire fuel down uh, to keep it down. Again, we're going for three hours worth of fire, but at a lower temperature. So let's take a look at the dough we're working with. And uh, yeah, this thing has grown. It's nice and bubbly. And this is gonna make some good bread and boy, does this smell good. With this dough, we're gonna work on it a little bit. I'm just gonna fold it over on itself and then we're gonna put it back in the container. Um, I may break out a second container for this.
checking in on our fire now after dealing with the dough. And uh, let's just uh, take some quick measurements. So the floor is at 233 degrees. The side of the oven at 370. So the side is in good shape. Here we've got 285. Um, we're just gonna let this fire burn for about another 30 to 45 minutes, um, maybe an hour. The floor is about a 128 degrees and that seems to be maybe rising a little bit. I want that to get a little bit more saturated before we're ready to uh, put the bread in. All right, we're gonna check on that again and uh, it's been about half an hour or so. I think the oven will be ready. So let's just uh, pull the door off. I'm taking some measurements. Yeah, 260. 80, 300, it's a little hot, 240, 210, it's okay. We'll put the bread a little further back in the oven than that, uh, where the floor is decidedly warmer. Our floor for thermometer has gone up about 20 degrees, and I think that's good to go. By the time I get to uh, the dough out in the oven, then we're probably going to be at uh, 160 or so. The good news is, if you're a pizza yolo, you already have the tools you need to handle the situation and making some bread. We're just going to clean the oven as we normally would. I'm going to take the bread or the loaves essentially out of the containers and put them on the pizza peel, a little bit of flour. We're going to slide them in the oven and we'll be good to go. bread's been in the oven for about uh, half an hour. I've been checking on it first and after 10 minutes and then in five minute increments after that. I turned the big loaf of bread in the back and um, the other loaf. So I'm going to take them out of the oven now and we're going to see how it's how it's done. I will note one thing that the oven temperature has dropped to the point where for my next batch I'm going to put some low density wood get a flame going so that I can more evenly heat the dome on the top and even on the far side uh, with a with a large flame and probably let that go until that wood burns out flame dies down might take 10 15 minutes to do that and then we're going to put the other batch in so maybe hard to see in this light um, these are very hot so I won't show for very long but uh, the nice golden brown, a little bit of extra flour on them. The next time I'm gonna make sure to use less as I put them in the oven, but this uh, batch is looking good. Hopefully you can see the special message on here, although honestly it doesn't show up very well. This is a UKR. We stand with Ukraine. This is a piece of pecan wood. It's low density, lower density than my oak. This should give us a nice big flame and that'll heat the oven a, a little more evenly than like a high density wood with a lower flame. You notice that I put the wood straight on the coals. If this oven were heated to pizza temperature, obviously I wouldn't be able to touch anything in the oven like I did with the bread before. But additionally, uh, you would see that uh, the wood would have caught on fire immediately. It's still gonna catch on fire and that's something you just kind of learn to have faith in as you're doing this. Let's 
check back in and see how our loaves are doing here. Oh yeah, see, it's like we're getting some nice uh, uh, rise out of it. The flame has gone down. So I'm gonna move these a little closer in. I apologize for the lack of audio. Unfortunately, it couldn't be helped. It's a shame because biting into this bread gives such a satisfying, crunchy sound and feeling. It's just amazing. The internal of the bread is not too soft. It's chewy enough, and it really feels good just biting down into it. A little butter on this bread, and it's amazing. Here I'm cutting apart some of the buns that we made, but in the end we opened up the large loaf and it was even better. Airier, nice big bubbles inside of it and just an amazing texture for an artisan bread. I hope this was useful to you as it was tasty to me and that you get something out of it. If you do, give us a thumbs up and like it. If you uh, would like to see more videos like this, subscribe. We have a lot of content on our channel. And I think you'll find as a pizzaiolo or a bread maker that this could be helpful to you in your journey. Thanks very much. Look forward to seeing you next time.